Despite numerous requests, I have held off doing this video because, truth be told, I just don't like sad endings to stories, especially the ones that I tell. In fact, there are times when I'll avoid reading a book or watching a movie or TV show just because I have an inkling that things aren't going to end well. So fair warning to anyone watching, there are no happy endings in this video. Still, when you look back at Deborah Lee Scott's career, there really is a ton worth celebrating. Now, I'm not going to talk much about the movies that she appeared in, but a couple that still stick out are American Graffiti, yep, that's a young Harrison Ford with Ms. Scott, as well as her reoccurring appearances in the Police Academy movie franchise. Instead, I want to focus on Deborah Lee's TV career. She first came to prominence on the farcical soap opera Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. While I was aware of that show, I wasn't all that interested to be truthful. I guess I was just too young to appreciate that show's particular brand of humor. It was Deborah Lee's next television role, however, that really grabbed my attention. You see, along with every other kid in our neighborhood, I was a big fan of the TV show Welcome Back, Cotter, and Deborah Lee played a character that appeared in numerous episodes during that really great first season of the show. Her character's name was Rosalie, but her classmates and the sweat hogs knew her better as Hotsy Totsy. After that first season, she would reprise the role one more time in 1978 in an episode that brought us up to date on her life post high school. And around the same time, Scott was making her mark, really making her mark, as a great celebrity contestant on game shows like Password Plus and Match Game. In fact, Scott is somewhat notorious for a particular moment during an episode of Password Plus. Yep, long before Ms. Janet Jackson, Deborah Lee invented the term wardrobe malfunction. The next thing that I remember Deborah Lee in was an ABC sitcom called Angie, where she played the main character's younger sister, Marie. I remember when Angie debuted, it looked like the show was going to take off and run for years, like Happy Days and Laverne and Shirley. But then the producers decided to have Angie get married at the beginning of the second season, and wouldn't you know it? Just like that, the show's ratings began to decline week after week, until finally, the network execs gave the show the axe. It really was a bummer because I liked that show a lot. So. After Angie, Deborah Lee made the decision to step away from the camera. She knew the industry well, and at that point, she was something of a seasoned, grizzled veteran, if you will. And because of her experiences, she decided to help others as they journeyed toward entertainment, fame, and fortune as a talent agent. It was rewarding work for her, and like everything else that Deborah Lee had ever done, she gave it her all. And you know what? She wasn't looking for love when she stepped into a bar in 1995 and began visiting with a burly, tattooed, cowboy hat-wearing feller who told her that he was in law enforcement. But whether or not she was looking for it, love found her. And for the next five years, Deborah Lee and John Dennis Levi were inseparable. And in 2000, after five years of courtship, he proposed to her and they began making wedding plans. Unfortunately, their fairy tale relationship was cut short by one truly horrible day. One of the worst in U.S. history. Officer Levi was one of those officers who rushed to the buildings to try and aid others, only to find themselves in peril. On that fateful day, Officer Dennis would ultimately end up giving his life to help others. From everything that I've read, he called Deborah Lee twice to tell her what was going on and that he was okay. Sadly, the most important call, the one where he would have told her that he was tired, exhausted, and ready to head home, well, that one never happened. As you might expect, this was an emotional blow that was truly devastating for Deborah Lee. I think Dickens said it best when he said, You think you're going to die of a broken heart, but you keep living day after day after terrible day. From what I've read, Deborah Lee retreated from the world and found comfort far too often in the form of a bottle. And in 2005, her sister urged her to come and spend time with her. And Deborah Lee agreed that it probably was a good idea. Unfortunately, she wasn't with her sister long before she unexpectedly, for unknown reasons, slipped into a coma. And after some heroic measures, Deborah Lee seemed to recover and went home with her sister, but three days later. Just three days later, she went to sleep and never woke up. I know that I've heard people say that no one ever died of a broken heart, but I've got to say I don't believe it. 
I've seen it happen many times when a spouse passes away and before you know it, their partner follows. Quite simply, they just can't live in this world apart from the person that they love the very most. And I truly believe that this is what happened with Deborah Lee. And I hope that somewhere and in some way she has now been reunited with her soulmate. So, like I said, this video is a bit of a bummer. Still, it's a story worth telling because Deborah Lee's life and the love that she felt is worth remembering, just like it is in each one of our own lives. Let's all resolve to tell those that we care for how much we love them. Let's do it today, because you never know if there will be a tomorrow. All right, one more picture. I like this one a lot. Anyway, please share your memories in the comments section. And while you're at it, I'd love a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And I would be absolutely honored if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.